All right, let's start talking about Vim. You need to learn to use a text editor very well. And my recommendation is you learn either Emacs or Vim. I started down the Vim pathway, ooh, uh, quite a while ago, um, in the mid-80s, so 35 years ago. So I have kind of just stuck with that. Um, but Emacs is certainly a valid choice as well. But let me just tell you about Vim. So Vim, and I call it VI all the time because that's what it used to be called. And also it's one character shorter and you only have a limited number of keystrokes in your lifetime. So you can run VI. Um, in fact, let's just hold on on that. So there is a tutorial that's worth noting about, Vim Tutor. I recommend, if you're not really good at Vim, you go through the tutorial. Okay. However, I'm going to just show you kind of the highlights. But you want to become an expert at your text editor because much of your life as a computer science programmer and so on is going to be editing text, plain text. So let's say I want to create a file factorial.c. I can just say vi factorial.c. And at this point now, I am in the uh, edit mode. Okay. So I'm typing a space, uh, doesn't do anything. So Vim has different modes, right? It is definitely modal. If you're stuck in here and you need to know how to get out of Vim, you know, colon Q gets you out. So I'm going back in here. Um, in order to get into insert mode, you can Actually, let's just look at the navigation first. So let's get back out of here and let's look at a nice big file. So JOS, a kern, um, console.c. Okay, so here I am. Let's first talk about navigation when we're in edit mode. Okay, the keys that you want, you can use arrow keys, but you don't want to use the arrow keys. And the reason you don't use arrow keys is they're different from keyboard to keyboard. Plus, it, you have to move your hand around to get to them. So you want to use the navigation keys. And the navigation keys are H, J, K, and L. So H moves left, L moves right, which kind of makes sense. That's the leftmost and rightmost of that pair. And then J moves down and key moves up. So you could just put your four fingers on that and, and, and do that. So that's one way to navigate around. Okay. You can also navigate around larger amounts at a time. So control D moves down and control U moves up. You don't want to go lamba 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 lamba. You want to go amounts at a time. Uh, and oops, I just did something bad. I'm going to do that. Okay, so control D goes down. Control F will go a full page. And control P. No, uh, I don't remember what else goes up. I, I usually use control D and control U. Okay, another thing you can do is if you want to go to a particular line number, like let's say you have an error message that says on line 171 there's a problem. Okay, you can type 171 capital G and that'll take you to line 171. How do I know I'm on line 171? Um, I could do a colon F and it tells you, sorry, I know I'm on line 171 because it tells me right here. That's how I know I'm on line 171. So 1G will take you to the beginning of the file and capital G by itself will take to the end of the file. All right. If you're in a particular screen, H will take you to the top, L will take you to the bottom, and M will take you to the middle. And that's also handy. So you want to be using these navigation keys to move around. You don't really want to be using one, moving one character at a time normally. Other things you can do, W moves you a word at a time. B moves you back. Capital W moves you a slightly different definition of word. I rarely use that. And then you can also move, so let's say I'm here and I want to go to the R character. I can do F, R, and that'll take me to the next R. Okay. Uh, why would that be useful? Well, because let's say you're trying to go to somewhere in the line and you can kind of see what's there, like for instance, F equals. Takes me to my equals character. If I do a semicolon, it repeats the search. Okay, if I do a comma, it repeats the search the other way. If I go to FW or F0, it 
takes me to zero. Now, why is that useful? Well, because maybe I want to change this while statement. Okay, so all these navigation options are useful as you are moving places. They're also useful for deletion. So let me get an example. Let's say I'm here and I'm going to delete one character. I can say DL because I moved to the right. I D and I do one to the right. I'm going to undo that by typing it U. Or I can, let's say, delete three characters. So I can say um, D3 L. Sorry, D3 L, which will undo. Okay. Or here, I could, let's say, be inside here and I could say DF0. And again, I'm going to undo that. So for deleting and things like that, it's very handy to be able to have this kind of a target for your navigation. So you can easily identify what it is you are, let's say, deleting. You can also use this for replacement mode. For So C is a replacement mode. So I can say CF0 and now type, uh, I don't know, let's say while one. So the C actually takes you into insertion mode, which we haven't talked about yet. We'll get to some more of that in a moment. Uh, more deleting you can do, DD deletes a line. So that's the way you want to delete multiple lines. If I'm going to delete three lines, three DD. Okay. The, you can put a number in front of just about any command, and it will do it that many times. Okay. So uh, three find equals takes me to the third equals, for example. So if I'm going to delete some code and move it somewhere else, let's say I want to do this whole body. I can do 5dd and then move down here, and that is deleted it, and it's also moved it into the buffer, which is like the clipboard. And so now I can move somewhere, let's say to the end, and now I can do a capital P and paste it. Or, sorry, a lowercase p and paste it. So that'll paste it after the current line. Or a capital P, paste it above the current line. All right. Um... So let me undo that. So now let's look at going into insert mode. So let's say I do a capital G to go to the end, and now I want to add a new line. How do you add? I would do an O to add a new line after the current line. So just like P, paste the contents of the buffer after the current line, and capital P paste before, O opens a new line after the current line, and capital O opens a, new, opens a new line before the current line. So let's say I'm in the middle of this while, and I do an O. It opens a new line afterwards. So I don't have to go all the way to the end of the line, and then hit insert or something else. Okay, and capital O inserts before. You, you, it takes time to learn all these, of course, but what you need to do is force yourself to use, you know, learn a couple of new Vim commands every day and force yourself to learn them. You'll be slower to begin with, but you'll be much quicker afterwards. Reminds me of a story. So my first uh, freshman year of college, I got a job in the summer working for, of all things, a phone company. Um, and I used to have to do a bunch of typing. And part of the typing I had to do included numbers. I didn't know how to touch type numbers, so I didn't know them by memory. I would have to look. So after about the second or third day, I said, I'm going to be typing a lot of numbers. So I guess I should learn. So I looked, I realized, you know, figured out which numbers I should be typing with which fingers. And then I just forced myself not to look. So I must have looked so stupid that day as, you know, I had to be typed like 853 and I'd think to myself, 8. That's the middle finger of my right key. Reach up, hit the 8. 5. That is with my left finger to the right hit the five. Three, my middle finger on my left, hit the three. And that's about how fast I was typing. But within a few days, I was much faster than I was before. So it's worth reducing your performance in order to have increased performance later. And that's true really of all the tools that you use. But the text editor you use so often, so you really want to learn that. Um, as I said, U is undo. Control R is redo, if that's important. Um, and let's see, so insert once you're in insert mode, so this is insert mode, don't use arrows to move around, okay? You're not supposed to use arrows, you're supposed to use H, J, K, and L, and if you use H, J, K, and L, it's gonna type H, J, K, and L, okay? Instead, get out of insert mode, 
Hmm, that's an important question. So first off, notice it shows you, whoops, that you're in insert mode. Okay, so that's worth knowing. You can always get out of insert mode by typing the escape key. Okay, and you can type it more than once if you want, because if you're in normal mode and hit the escape, uh, all it does is beep at you. The thing to watch out for is sometimes the escape key is not handy, because the escape key is not in the same place on every single keyboard. Uh, and in fact, I have mapped the escape key for myself so that the escape key is actually caps lock. That's not that uncommon. Uh, but it's really crucial for me because I've got one of the new MacBook Pros uh, with a touch bar, and the escape key is actually on the touch bar. And I hate pressing keys there. There's no feel for them or anything else. So I've got the escape key Mac caps lock key Mac to escape key. And then I actually also have a tiny little Bluetooth keyboard that I'm using right now that doesn't even have an escape key. So if you're somehow, I don't know, on a desert island and don't have an escape key, you can always use control left bracket, left square bracket, because that is the same ASCII character as escape. Uh, but in general, you could always use the mapping. And let me just show you how you do mapping uh, on the Mac. So you would go to System Preferences, and then Keyboard, and there you go to Modifier Keys, and you can see here, for your particular keyboard that you want, what do you want the caps lock to go to? And I map it to Escape. Okay. And the nice thing about that is uh, that'll just go with me wherever I go. I can use the Escape key in all programs using caps lock instead. Okay, so here we are back to here. Um, we've talked about insert mode. Um, there are actually, as we talked a little bit about a variety of ways to get into insert mode. So I will insert before the current character. Uh, A will insert after the current character. So often you want one or the other of those. Again, O starts a new line after the cursor, and O starts a new line. So O is a Lowercase o is a new line after the current line. Uppercase o is a new line before the current line. That's about it. The only thing is, so if you want to write, uh, you probably know you do a colon w. Okay, I'm not going to actually write like right now because I don't like the changes I made. Colon q will quit. It, of course, warns us since we have not made any changes. So q, q, exclamation. And then there is a command you can use. I'm going to just undo all the changes. Uh, which is capital Z, capital Z. And that will write and quit if you've made any changes. And if you haven't, it won't bother writing. So that way your timestamps on your files won't get wrong. So Shift CZ is a, is a, I don't know, it's a handy thing. A lot of people don't know it. I like it better than uh, colon WQ return, partially because, again, I don't like to update the dates of files if I haven't actually changed them. Um, and so that gives me one universal way to exit assuming there aren't changes I don't want to write. That is Vim. Please learn this well.